Yeah, that was a fun episode. Slightly unpredictable boot, but I am impressed with the amount of stuff that they were able to cram in here, and it didn't feel too overblown either, or rushed for that matter, although they are definitely wasting days because we still got to get rid of, um, seven more people over the next nine days, so, uh, yeah, they're doing a Millennials vs. Gen X bit where they just keep as many people around as they can and then they just do rapid file boot after rapid file boot. Uh, oh well, nothing we could do about it, yeah. Anyway, so let's talk about the uh, challenges mainly first. I'm going to do things a little out of order this time. I really like these challenges. Sure, the rehashes of challenges that we've already seen, but they were interesting. And then, for the first time in Survivor history, as far as I know, we've had a real um, advantage hitting at a challenge, and they don't find it. Not to say that it didn't look like Xander was looking for it, but... He didn't look truly underneath him, and it isn't too hard to... Not do that, but at the same time, it can happen. It's really all coincidental, though I do like the fact that it was better hidden than what happened in Game Changers, because in Game Changers, everyone was saying we were expecting the person sitting there to notice it and no one else, but given how it was hidden there, it really screamed to me as being the opposite. Well... Here, they um, eliminated that possibility of the other people really noticing it, which I liked, but, yeah. And one thing that's kind of sad is that we'll never know exactly what um, was in there. I don't think it could be the uh, safety without power advantage, and I don't think it was like the coin that Michelle had in, um, Winners at War, so I'm willing to bet that it could be another steal a vote, but I don't know. And by the time the season's over, it's probably not going to be revealed to us, so there's that. Then the immunity challenge, well, for the first time in a while... Somebody that clearly really needed the immunity going into it <laughs> got it. So congrats to Evie for that one. Then as for um, camp dynamics, well, the big issue was that the yellow tribe has 100% unraveled, which was a little shocking because three of the four of them were together. They're at the end of um, last tribal, and Tiffany's exit interview. It isn't entirely clear exactly how it happened. She does make it clear that Xander made the first move, but exactly what that first move was was a little hard for me to follow, honestly. But given how everyone is talking to each other about just about everything, so they're doing a worse job of keeping secrets in this season than they did in Triple H... But getting back to what I was saying, given the chaos, it seems honestly like this is just one more thing to just throw in there. Because it's really hard for me to figure out um, who exactly is with who. Not entirely a bad thing, but it doesn't make for a great episode making, like with Top Shot All-Stars. It's a lot more fun to watch rather than talk. Then as for, um, Ricard's bit, um, I don't totally fault him for just wanting to give it a, a little try, but his behavior, the way that he did it, it did seem to be kind of cocky, yeah. Granted, he does, um, try to do a bit of an apology, along with explaining it in the confessionals, but the edit really made him seem better than it actually was, I think, because maybe if he had just waited a tiny bit, that might have made a difference, or even better, what if he had just asked, what did you guys find that, and then went out there himself? That would have fixed it. 
It's not something that we really think about anymore, especially since this isn't um, pre-hitting the mute in the idol era anymore, because it seems like the definition of old school has changed from before hitting the mute in the idols to where hitting the mute in the idols, the norm was actually finalized, aka um, Samoa and HVV as the end of it, yeah. Then, after the immunity challenge, there's all the, um, business about do you want to target, um, Xander vs. Nasir, and... Yeah, everyone has their own individual arguments to make, but based on the edit, I got the idea that nothing would probably happen to Nasir, even though I do still stand by that, my statement that something is going to happen to this guy. Because... He's a loyal number, but he's not really doing that much for his own game. Xander, he is, but it's just odd. Because he's not as bumbling as David, because, as I've said on and off, this guy does have smarts. Especially since, as he said, I sacrificed my shot at winning the rewards so I could be with the losers. Because that gives me a better way to interact with the group as a whole. Smart. But, I don't know, there's just something about it. Even though I'm not one to talk, because I would easily be doing worse than he is in this situation. So, going into Tribal, I got the idea that the Seer probably wouldn't go anywhere. And that it would actually probably be Heather, especially when the live... Um, discussing with each other came in, but then, once again, everyone besides the former Yellow Tribe members, minus uh, Liliana, flips and uh, votes out Tiffany. Which was a little surprising, but not altogether a huge um, loss, because that does um, weaken Xander a little bit, even though he was the vote for the Seer. So, hmm, it's going to be really interesting to see what um, happens uh, next. No, I didn't watch the next time bit. I don't watch those anymore. But, uh, yeah, and one thing that kind of gets to me about the challenge is why didn't Danny um, sit out and offer himself for the food bit? Because that struck me as a little bit out of character for him. Like, why would he not be comfortable enough. Because, yeah, he's a likable guy, but he's not going to win this game. No way. Who knows? See ya.